Hi, Eric Gibault, EricGibault.com, and today we're going to speak about memory. Not your memory, your uh, memory cards, okay? What each uh, small figures here, what does it mean? What card you should uh, choose for your camera, depending on what you want to do, the specs of your camera, all this. So we're going to get into details. So let's start. There are many types of uh, memory cards. Uh, these are SD cards. You have also Compact Flash, CF Express, uh, Sony Memory Stick. I don't know if they still make them. I'm not sure. Okay, but doesn't matter. I'll, I'll only have SD cards. Okay, but what's important is written, what's written on it, and the way to calculate if they work for you or not. So this is what's the important point. If your camera uses a different uh, format, doesn't matter. The information will be similar. Okay, so uh, that's important to know what it is for and what you can do with it. Okay. The first thing you should check is your instruction manual because there it's written what card is recommended for your camera, the speed, the size, and many things, sometimes even the brand, okay? It's really important because many people uh, think that uh, class 10 is okay and that's it. There are many more things uh, you need to know, okay? But anyway, aside of uh, listening to this video, watching this video, please check your instruction manual then normally recommend a specific card now i explain i get into details already said it but now we really get into there okay so there are a lot of information on the card uh normally you have the brand like this one is sandisk this one is lexar sometimes they have a name for it so this is lexar professional 633x what does that mean well i don't know it uh, depends on what you start from uh uh, X, uh, X time uh, 633, uh, so, uh, some are called uh, 2000X, this is marketing, okay? So uh, the rest of the details are more important, okay? SanDisk, I put the, this name here is Extreme Pro and SanDisk, that's it. But we're going to check the rest. Well, the first thing that is important is the capacity. The, this one is 64 gigabytes, this one is 16 gigabytes. And many people make a massive mistake here. They think the more capacity, the better. No, it depends what you're going to do. If you're going to record video and you don't stop, uh, you, you continue uh, continuously like 30, 45 minutes, one hour, you need a really high capacity card, maybe 256 gigabyte or 128 gigabyte, depends on uh, the frame rate you're going to, you're going to record, okay? And uh, the frame rate and the, so the size, if it's like 4K, Full HD, all this, okay? But when you make pictures, if you have a really high resolution card, yes, it's good to have higher capacity because each file is big, okay? But sometimes it's a big mistake. Because let's say you have a problem with the card, electronic problem, or it falls on the floor and you walk on it and it's, it's bent and then it doesn't work anymore, you've lost everything. So if, unless you really need to uh, have a really high capacity for video reason, then for photography, it's better to have uh, two cards of 64 gigabyte than just one of 128 or a full card of uh, 64 instead of one uh, card of 256. Because if you lose something, you lose everything. If you have a problem with your card, you may lose everything. So that's really important. Uh, think of the capacity you actually need. And except if it is video, it's better to have smaller cards than larger one. But uh, depending on the type of cards, uh, sometimes small capacity will, on, uh, will not have a, a speed that is enough anyway, okay? So you have to check uh, this and uh, what I'm going to tell next, okay? So, but pick the capacity you actually need, okay? Not more than what you need. Then when you check the card, like this one, it's, re it's written here, SDHC, high capacity. What does that mean? Uh, that means it's high capacity, okay? But actually it's not really high capacity anymore, okay? It goes from uh, 2, 2 gigabyte up to 32 gigabyte card, this one. And this one is written XC, extreme capacity, which goes from 64 gigabyte up to two terabyte, okay? But there's a big difference between both of them, not just capacity. The smaller one, the high capacity, two to 32 gigabyte, is formatted in FAT32, uh, which is a computer format, okay? That means that uh, each file can have a maximum size of four gigabyte. So if you record during uh, 30 minutes, probably you'll have two or three files with this card, which is a problem because uh, then when you want to uh, do the, edit uh, the editing after on your computer, you have several files. If you wanted to synchronize with sound, maybe it's a problem. Uh, okay, so know that. If you go for XD, uh, XC, sorry, 
extreme, extreme capacity, then you can have a, one file that is a lot larger and not several files, okay? Then all these cards, they write 10 in a small C, class 10, okay? Uh, most cameras, they tell you you need a class 10 card and you feel that with class 10, that's it. No, there are more things, okay? Uh, there are also other, other cards like uh, class uh, 3, class 4, uh, well, class 4, class 6, I'm not sure, class 2, I don't know. Now they all have 10, okay? But that's not enough. But you see, C10, this is for class 10, okay? Then you have the speed, okay? It's written 300 megabytes per second. And here it's written uh, 95, okay? And this one is written 170. But this is the read speed, not the write speed. It means when you're going to uh, read your card uh, on the screen of your uh, uh, camera or you want to download the, the pictures or the video to your computer, the higher this number, the faster the transfer will be made, okay? But you need to know the write speed also, but they normally don't write it on the card. So very often you need to check on the uh, brand uh, manufacturer uh, website or maybe on the dealer, they write it to know what is the actual uh, read, uh, write speed, okay? Having a really high write speed doesn't make your camera faster. It means that if you do, for example, a uh, video, you have what the video needs. Having a higher speed for your memory card doesn't make your uh, video smoother if you already had enough of uh, what, what you're doing needs, okay? But you will see the difference when you make picture with burst rate. Like I go like 10 frames per second, with really high uh, uh, resolution, then yes, the difference will be not while you make the burst, but it will fill the buffer of your camera, and the slower the car card, the longer it will take to uh, empty the buffer to the card, and it will freeze the camera longer. So if you do a lot of uh, sport photography, action photography, and you're always going the higher the, the ride speed, the uh, sooner the buffer will be empty, you can keep shooting, okay? So that's important. Okay, then they tell you you have UHS-1, UHS-2, what is that? Well, that's easy. This is UHS-1, this is UHS-2, and in this one you have two row, and the two you have two rows of contact, and this one, UHS-1, you have one row, okay? With two rows, it writes and reads a lot faster, but your camera needs to support it. It's pointless to buy a UHS-2 if your camera doesn't support it because although it will probably use the top uh, row uh, that is the same as this one, you've spent some money you're not actually using, okay? Same, if you put a UHS-1 in a UHS-2 uh, uh, camera that supports a UHS-2, it will work, but you will not get the result they announced. You actually need the card that really match, okay? So, important. Uh, UHS-2, two rows, UHS-1, one row. Don't buy an UHS-2 if your camera does not support it, it's pointless, okay? Second, here you have a small number on it, it's written U, you have U1, U2, U3. Here this one is a U1, it means the minimum is 10 megabytes per second. And U3 is maximum, uh, is, sorry, minimum 30 megabytes per second. But, then some people make a massive confusion. They say, oh, with my camera, I'm going to record video 4K 60. And it says, the codec says I'm on uh, ProRes with uh, 800 megabits per second. And so I need a card that says 800 megabits per second. Otherwise, it will not write fast enough. No. Megabits and megabytes are not the same thing. Cards are, the say, transfer speed in megabytes. And when you speak about your codec is megabits. One byte is equal to eight bits. It means if I record a video that says uh, I'm recording on 200 megabits per second, it means I need a write speed of 25, I divide by eight, 25 megabytes per second, okay? But take care. Here's written the, written, the reading speed, not the writing speed, okay? That's really important. But you, uh, need to have some margin because this is in ideal situation okay so it's important if you calculate that you actually need like uh, 25 uh, megabytes uh, write speed well if you have 50 is better or 100 is fine but you don't need to spend money for 300 okay that's what I mean okay but it's important to know how to calculate that then you also have here a small number that is written V 
V90 here, here is V30, uh, and here there's no V. What is that? That's when you do video, it's really important. It means the right speed, minimum right speed, 30 megab megabytes, 60 megabytes, 90 megabytes. 90 is a lot. We, right now, I'm recording with the V60 with my Lumix in 4K, uh, 25 frames per second, okay? And there are V60 with no problem, okay? The codec is uh, enough. To, uh, to, to give uh, this, I'm on, I'm on 10 bit uh, 422, and that's fine, okay? So uh, that's okay. So, what is really, really important? Uh, many people spend too much money on their card. Uh, too much money uh, because they buy something that is really fast, really high capacity, and the camera doesn't need that much. It's pointless to uh, have something that can write at 300 megabytes per second if you actually need 50. Yeah, no point. So you're spending on extra money for nothing. So uh, it's important you check on your manual and check on uh, groups to check what is actually uh, the, the ideal card for what you want to do and for the camera you have. Okay. Second, Sometimes you list, you read the, the manual, it says you need uh, V30, for example, and minimum speed, and this and that. And you buy the card like this, and it doesn't, doesn't work fine, or it just doesn't work. And there's a reason for that. There are many brands and many cards. Only buy the one that are certified by the maker of your camera. Only buy this one. Normally, they have several cards they recommend, buy this one. Because otherwise, you spend money, maybe it's not compatible, doesn't work fine, there are some uh, strange things that happen and you lose everything, okay? So, if you don't know which one, I recommend Lexar, SanDisk, Angelbird, but don't buy exotic brands. Sometimes you see some people who say, no, I've bought this uh, greatcard.com, it's written on it, I don't know which brand it is, that's fine and that's okay. No, don't buy this. You spend a lot of money on your camera, but what's most valuable is not your camera, it's the picture and the video you make with it. So spend good brand. Second, famous brand, they have copies. So don't buy, uh, you see a special offer with SanDisk on eBay, don't buy it. Buy your cards in a physical shop or a famous online shop, buy there. Don't buy from uh, strange places because you think, oh, this SanDisk that normally costs $100 is here for $25. Forget it. This is a copy with a simple sticker on a stupid card. Okay, so that's really important. Okay, take care with your card. Manipulate this card smoothly, gently. Okay, don't press it like mad in the camera because it's fragile. You can actually uh, break this small, like some kind of small tunnel here, uh, what's that, a small canal here channel uh, if you press it you may break them okay or put it the wrong way uh, side back or whatever so take care with your card and uh, the way you manipulate it the way you keep it all this second here you have a small lock if you uh, push that back it will lock it means it won't be able to write anymore on the card okay move this gently if it breaks you can keep reading what's in the card but you cannot write anymore so it's important gently okay how do you read your card? Many people, they just uh, connect the USB cable to the camera and they read. I recommend not to do that. I know some people say it doesn't really matter, but I recommend you don't do that. Because if there's any uh, overcharge with your computer, that may go through the USB cable and fry your camera. Use a card reader, extract the card, place it in, the, in, in your reader, and uh, download the picture. Don't use just any reader. It's no point to buy a 300 megabytes per second read speed and have a card reader that supports 100, okay? So get the card, the card reader that can really uh, cope with that. Will not affect the picture you make, okay? But it will affect the time it takes to read the card. So that's really also important. And then sometimes cards, they fail. They fail, I don't speak about physical failure uh, that you work on it, okay? Or you break it or you lose it, but they just fail. You make picture, it says, uh, write error or read error or whatever. When this happens, stop making picture with this card. Remove the card, place another one and keep shooting. And when you get home, so that's a good reason also to have several smaller cards than a really large card, because if you have only one, then if it fails, you lose uh, the pictures and also the fact that you cannot carry shooting because you don't have card anymore, okay? So when you have a read error or write error, 
normally because there is an index table that is corrupted. All your data on your uh, card are just placed really in a strange way, okay? And then you have an index table that says uh, this file is split between this part, this part, this part, this part, and this part, and then get, the, get it together. If this table gets corrupted, then it's impossible to know what's there, okay? So when you shoot and there's an error, remove the card, and then use a, a, a card like a Rescue Pro uh, that comes with Sandy's card. It's free for one year, I think, after it's 20 euros, I'm not sure, okay? And it will check on the card because the data are there. The table may be corrupted, but the data is still there. So it will find all the data and recreate a table, an index table, okay? So don't shoot anymore because if you keep shooting, it will think the space is empty when it's there, there were your picture there. So it will override them. So it's really important that when you have a problem, stop shooting, change card, and then use a software to uh, recover your pictures. Really important, okay? So what is the best card for you? Well, as I say, check your instruction manual, check uh, the requirement of what you want to do. If you want to do video, 4K, 60 frames per second or more or whatever. If you do uh, so only pictures and uh, you have a really high resolution or not, if you do burst rate, all this. A really high uh, write speed will not make your burst rate faster. It will just uh, make your camera available again faster or sooner, okay? That's it. So, uh, I hope this video really helps you pick the right cards. Uh, at least to understand what's written on the card, okay? That really helps to, uh, to not spend your money in the wrong way, okay? So, thank you for watching the video. If you feel it may interest other people, please share it on social networks. If you have not done it yet, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Small button down here, so small bell. If you click on the bell, get notified when I upload a new video. My website, erikgipo.com. If you have any question, you can leave a comment below. I'll also leave you links of my gear on Amazon, links of everything I reviewed by KF Concepts, and Mark and Flashes by Westcott, and also link to my, uh, and some more uh, affiliated links, and also a link to my PayPal account in case you wanted to make a donation. Thank you very much. Please take care of yourself and see you soon. Bye.